So today in our notes, we're going to move the vertex from the center to be a point on the circle. So if we follow art or follow out, the arc that is included between the rays of the angle is arc AB. And the measure of angle ADB is half the measure of arc AB. Or you can say that the arc, so the measure of AB, is two times the measure of angle ADB. All right, our first theorem, inscribed angles that intercept the same arc. So let's trace. Let's look at arc AC to start. An angle that intercepts that arc, so if you start with vertex D and follow out, and then follow out to C, so the angle ADC intercepts that arc, which is number 4, and um, angle ABC, angle 2, both intercept the same arc. So that means that 2 and 4 are congruent. If I grab a different color and look at arc BD and follow along, we have angle BAD that intercepts that arc and also BCD that intercepts that arc. So 1 and 3 are also congruent to each other. The next theorem, an inscribed angle in a semicircle. Well, a semicircle measures how many degrees? So here's 180 on that side, and then it's actually within the 180 degrees on this side. But if I get rid of that arc and protect so this angle is half of 180. So an inscribed angle in a semicircle creates a right triangle. So in example one, we have to find the measure of angle LMP and then the measure of arc MN. So I'm going to first look at angle LMP. <coughs> the vertex is on the circle, and the angle is half of the arc when it's an inscribed angle. So this angle here is going to be half of 36, which is 18 degrees. Arc MN, so it goes from here to here. If we follow along the end point to the angle that intercepts the arc, that's 48. So remember, the angle is half of the arc, so to get the arc, we double 48 to get 96. So the measure of arc MN is 96 degrees. In the second one, we do see a central angle. So in the accompanying figure, the measure of central angle BOC, we know that arc BC is also 60 degrees. And then to find the measure of angle BAC, the vertex is on the circle, so that's an inscribed angle. It's half of 60, which is 30 degrees. And the last one, find the value of x and y. Here we have a diameter, which divides the circle into two semicircles, which is each 180 degrees. So if this arc is 120, then this arc here would be 60. x is the inscribed angle that intercepts the arc of 60 degrees. So x is equal to half of 60 which is 30. And what about y? Mary? Y is 90 degrees. Y is 90 degrees. It's an inscribed angle in a semicircle, and if you follow it out, this arc that it intercepts is 180 degrees. So yes, y is 90 degrees. Nice job.
The next theorem is the inscribed quadrilateral. Today you're going to construct an inscribed square, which is a regular quadrilateral, and then we're going to construct an inscribed hexagon, regular hexagon. So it states that A, B, D, E can be inscribed in a circle. C, if and only if the measure of angle A plus D is 180 degrees, and then B plus E is 180 degrees. We know that all four add up to how many degrees? A quadrilateral has an interangle sum of 360. We're not going to prove this theorem, but I am going to go over why it's true or why it works. Okay? So I took the one angle pair um, in this quadrilateral. I'm looking at angle A. So I'm going to follow it out. Here's angle A. And then angle C. But right now, what do you know about angle A? about angle A. I can't say it's greater than or less than some measurement right now because nothing ever is drawn to scale, but based on the picture in today's theorem, the vertex is on the circle, so it's half of what arc? We've got to go from this end point of the angle, or the ray, which intercepts A, C, D. I'm sorry, that's a B. So it's one half the measure of arc BC, right? I'm going to do the same thing and follow out for angle C. So angle C intercepts the circle at B, and then following along here, D. So tracing from B, A to D. We know that angle C is how much of arc B, A, D. another inscribed angle, so the measure of angle C is one half the measure of BCD. You may be able to see it already, but if we actually use substitution to add these two, because it says the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle C, all right, so this should be an A. All right, so using substitution, if I want to add the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle C, so based on what's above, the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle C equals one-half the measure of arc BCD. plus one-half the measure of arc BAD by substitution. On the right side, so I'm going to show that that is 180 degrees. So they have a common factor of one-half that I'm going to factor out. So that would leave the measure of BCD plus the measure of BAD, those two arcs. And together, you can see it because I traced it, together those two arcs add up to what? 360. So half of 360 is 180 degrees. So that's why. Keep it. <laughs> With the inscribed quadrilateral in the circle in number four, uh, I need to change it because you don't need to use the theorem here because the algebra or all of the expressions inside include the same variable. So without using this theorem, you could just simply add them all up and set them equal to 360. So I should change this to y and 2y. So you're forced when you solve for x. Do you want to do it that way? Okay. So now, instead of looking at a system, we know that what's true about opposite angles W and Y? They're supplementary. So 2X plus 4 plus X minus 4 equals 180 degrees. 
What do you get when you combine the like terms on the left side? 3x equals 180, divide by 3, and x is 60. And then for the others, um, 2y plus y equals 180, 3y equals 180, and y is also 60. So the last one, before we look at a tangent um, intersecting a chord theorem, it wants us to find the measure of angle. What about finding measure of angle that we use? Oh, yeah, we can plug it back in. When I said we should change, um, change this to x and y, I was changing the directions to solve for x and y. Well, you can go back and plug it in. Um, but me mentioning that's what I wanted to do, you guys were like, all right, let's do it. So we left it that way. Number five, what is the measure of angle BAC? So let's highlight that angle. BAC is right here. Well, in using what we've learned today, and that an inscribed angle is half of the arc, if we knew arc BC, we could find the inscribed angle BAC. Using the measurements within the figure, we have a pair of vertical angles right here. So this angle is 101. I'm going to leave the degree symbol out since there's not much room. If we can find this angle right here, instead of finding arc BC, we can just use the interangle sum of a triangle. Is there any way to find angle ABD? So if I trace um, angle ABD, that intercepts arc AD. And I don't know what AD is. Aiden? What's 23? Arc AD or angle ABD? Angle ABD is 23 degrees. Because if I trace along angle DCA, that also intercepts arc AD. And that's also an inscribed angle. So these angles are congruent. Now if I add up 23 and 101, we get 124. So to find this angle here, we just add them up, subtract it from three, or 180. So 180 minus 124 is 56 degrees. So 56 degrees equals the measure of angle BAC. And last, when a tangent and chord intersect, it says the measure of angle BPF is one half the measure of arc BEP. So I'm going to trace that. BEP is here, and angle BPF is here. So it's the angle that's intercepted, um, that's intercepting that arc. The vertex is still on the circle if you want to look at it that way, so that's why it's half. So down below in the picture, here's angle BAX, which is 75 degrees. Vertex is on the circle, so double it to find the arc. And what is arc BOA? 2 times 75 is 150. You could have also, so I should white that out, it says the arc BLA is 210, so you could just subtract that from 360 to find the other. So the measure um, of the angle is, or arc rather, is 150. And then what's the measure of angle BAD? BAD is along a straight line, which is how many degrees? 180, so 180 minus 75. 105 degrees. All right, now the proof. 
This proof you can tell by the font. Um, I took it from a Regents exam. It is pretty short. I did it in six steps. <laughs> I think it's pretty short. So we're given a di in the diagram below, quadrilateral ABCD is inscribed in circle O. It says that AB or chord AB is parallel to DC. So that means quadrilateral ABCD is a trapezoid. And diagonals AC and BD are drawn. Now diagonals, are they congruent in a trapezoid? No, they're only congruent in the isosceles trapezoid. So if we can prove it, it's isosceles, we could use that. But we just need to prove the triangles ACD. So if you want to trace it, ACD is right here. It's congruent to BDC. In every proof, you should look for reflexive. Can we use reflexive here? They're overlapping on CD. So that'll be step two. So we only have four more steps. So CD congruent to CD by the reflexive property. And then let's go by each given statement in the, uh, the givens. So let's look at AB parallel to CD. Parallel chords. This is from last class. So if AB is parallel to CD, what does that tell you? Mary? So arc AD is congruent to arc BC. So that'll be step three. So arc, be clear. So one thing that's noticed with your proofs is some of you aren't putting anything above the letters. You have to either put the line segment or the arc, okay? So this is arc AD congruent to arc BC. And how would, what would you, what would your reason or what would you write for the reason for that statement? Yeah? If two lines are parallel within a circle, then the, the corresponding arc segments are congruent? Well, I'm going to change your lines to be if um, two chords are parallel, to use the vocab, but it's not that they're corresponding arcs. It's specific and it's the arcs between those chords, right? Uh, if two chords are parallel, then the arcs between them are congruent. And then we have diagonals AC and BD. So right now we only have an S, an S, 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 or S, A, S, A, S, A, or angle, angle, side. What do congruent arcs give you from last class? Congruent central angles, right? But today, do we have any central angles? No, we have inscribed angles. So because the chord... AD is congruent, or I'm sorry, because the arc AD is congruent to the arc BC, the inscribed angle right here, BDC, I'm going to put a 1 there, that is an inscribed angle that intercepts that arc, and then also ACD is an inscribed angle that intercepts arc AD, and because the arcs are congruent, the inscribed angles are going to be congruent. So angle 1 congruent to angle 2. because inscribed angles that intercept 
congruent arc are congruent. So we have an S and an A. Do you see any other congruent arcs or angles that intercept congruent arcs? Or say angles that intercept the same arc? Sarah? Yes. So let's use red DAC. That intercepts arc CD. So let's put a 3 there. And then also angle CBD intercepts arc CD. So angle 3 is congruent to not 3, but 4. For a reason very similar. So number 5 is angle 3 congruent to angle 4 because inscribed angles that intercept the same arc are congruent. It might be hard to see but we do have the triangles congruent right now and we're done. If it's easier to draw them separate Here's the 2, here's the 1, here's the 3, here's the 4, and then here's CD. We have 2 congruent to 1 and 3 congruent to 4. So which shortcut is it? Mary? Actually, I have a question. Yep. So the two triangles are congruent by angle, angle, side. So the statement is ACD and then BDC. Yeah.